and Ho-Chunk nations. The word Minnesota comes from the Dakota phrase Minnesota Makoche, meaning land where the waters reflect the clouds. Here in Minnesota, we are home to one of the largest and most tribally diverse American Indian communities in the nation. It is here where the American Indian movement AIM was founded in 1968. The Native folks here continue to lead the charge against environmental racism, cultural genocide, and other forms of white supremacy. Please take a moment to reflect on the land that you are on today. Do you know who was here before you? Who are the people and what is the history of the land you are on? Recognize that history. And if you don't know, that's okay, but also ask yourself why? And ask yourself, what will you do to learn this history? And ask yourself what we all need to do to decolonize our brains, our histories, our movements, and our everyday lives. Thank you. So um, thank you again, everybody, for being here and joining us tonight. Again, my name is Katie. I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, and Minnesotan Stories provides a platform for Minnesotans to connect and learn together through stories and deepen our understanding of who we are as Asian Americans. And I have had the honor of being on the advisory committee for two years in a row straight. Mm. And I'm so excited to say that um, this year we are incorporating um, creative reflections as well into the submissions. And we've received several. Um, one of the reasons why I love being on the Minnesota Asians Committee is that I just love to hear all of the personal narratives that come through. And it's giving me a lot of, uh, I think, hope and also um, more confidence in who I am specifically because of all the things that are happening right now in our world. Um, and um, tonight, uh, you'll get the opportunity to hear stories from five of this year's storytellers. You will also get the opportunity to discuss and reflect on the stories. And you will uh, get information on how to stay engaged with the men aging stories for this month. And without further ado, I will uh, pass it over to Boa, who is my colleague, um, also on the uh, uh, advisory committee. Thanks, Katie. Hi, everyone. My name is Bua Zhang. I use she and her. And I've been with many Asian stories from the very beginning. And what I love about these stories is every single one of them is inspiring and powerful. And I'm really excited to introduce you to five of our very diverse, amazing storytellers tonight. We're going to start with Ram Kondor. He lives in Eden Prairie. He is a sky breath meditation teacher from the Art of Living Foundation and organizes weekend community workshops every month. He works at Best Buy, where I met him, in digital technology as a senior manager and is an immigrant from India. He lives in Eden Prairie with his wife and two kids. Here is Ram with his story called Harmony. Ram? Thank you, Boa, for a wonderful introduction. I'm excited to be part of this uh, Minnesota Asian Stories. So here is my story. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit the world in 2020, it slowed me down. Let me reflect on who oh, I said. am. The causing... Sorry? Let me start. I think I heard some background noise. Uh, so when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the world in 2020, it slowed me down. Let me reflect on who I am, causing anxiety, fear, and loss. But it also allowed me to explore ways to calm down and still be happy. I went through a storm of emotions and meditation was like a life jacket uh, it let me float and do what was necessary for myself and the people around me. 
before the pandemic, I was already a regular uh, meditation practitioner. Life taught me many lessons and some of them made me explore the depth and the width of life from meditation master and humanitarian, Gurudev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. I started meditating daily, completed self-study and practiced silence for three days, taking time off from daily activities. My years of meditation practice taught me how to calm my mind and focus. So I started conducting free online meditation sessions via Facebook Live and Zoom during the pandemic to pass on what I learned, how I can be part of this community. Many people shared that this helped them experience a calm state of mind and gain confidence to face the pandemic. All this from a 20 minute meditation session. Doing this allowed me to spend time with family and also learn new skills. After watching the horrible death of George Floyd, it brought me a lot of pain, making me question the world we live in and how we shape society. How can a person take a precious life in broad daylight? And no one could do anything other than watch. Riots didn't allow peaceful protest or help educate people on the importance of reforms. Society will always be diverse. So how do we celebrate diversity and respect others' opinions? I believe a stress-free, violence-free, healthy individual will build a strong personal society. This is why I continue to meditate every day. My hope is that by calming our minds, we can explore our differences more deeply and respectfully. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ram. I know that meditation has really changed your life. So I appreciate you sharing it um, with us, sharing that wonderful gift you have with us. And if any of you guys are interested in following Ram on some of his guided meditations, find him on Facebook. Um, he does it and he's amazing at it. So Ram, thank you so much. Next up, I want to introduce you guys to the coolest middle schooler around. Our next storyteller is Champalani Nyongthong. She is a 12-year-old Hmong Lao American in seventh grade at Washington Technology Magnet School in St. Paul. She aspires to become an aerospace engineer. Her hobbies are playing volleyball, reading, watching manga, and anime. And I love the title of her story. Here's Champalani. Hi, my name is Jampalani Orlani, and my story is called 2020 Stuff. I am one of millions of students forced to be in distance learning. At first, it was all right. I'm an only child, so I don't have siblings bothering me, and I can be selfish with the internet. However, there are students like my classmate who have to go to school and take care of her family. She always says she's going to cook or help her brothers and sisters with homework after school. When the teacher picks her to speak, she would unmute and quietly say, can you come back to me while a baby is crying into the mic? I picture her cradling her younger sister, and I feel sad because she is a child taking care of another child. In addition to being homebound and the loneliness of distance learning was racism. When I think about George Floyd, it reminds me of how every black person and person of color's chances of dying while living their everyday life is greater. My mind is blank most of the time, but I feel furious and my heart hurts. Even as a kid, the actions of the police have managed to feel my anger. Finally, I am proud to be Hmong Lao American. So when I don't see Asians on TV or learn about my community in school, I feel excluded. When the Atlanta shooting happened, I secretly thought if there were no protests or rallies, if the school didn't even address this issue, I'll be disappointed but it's fine because I keep hearing that Asians aren't having it as rough as other BIPOC communities. To my surprise, many people came to support Stop, the Stop Asian Hate Rally in St. Paul and other virtual events like this one that I attend with my mom. I even saw a 10 minute long news coverage about Asians. 2020 taught me a lot about hate and, the, and showed me the positive changes that I can be a part of. 
And my dad caught COVID, but he survived. So I guess that's one good thing about 2020. Thank you. Thanks, Chapel and Jamalani. You are a troop. And the good news is you only have a couple weeks left of school. So you're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Our next storyteller is Kyu Young Kim. He is a Korean American violinist and an arts administrator who lives right here in St. Paul. His appointment as the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra's artistic director in 2016, while still maintaining his role as principal violin, was the first time a playing member had been tapped to take the artistic helm of a major American orchestra. Under Kim's artistic leadership, the SPCO opened its new concert hall at the Ordway Center for the Performing Arts to critical acclaim. It toured throughout the US and to Europe and even won a Grammy Award in 2018. Help me welcome Q Yu Kim. Thank you so much, Bua. So my story is called Speaking Up. Before moving to Minnesota for a job in the St. Paul Chamber Extra, I was a violin student living in an apartment near Lincoln Center in New York City. One day I was riding the elevator with an elderly woman with a thick Russian accent. I remember so clearly the disgust in her voice when she said to me, I hope you didn't leave any of those menus. Excuse me, I said, momentarily confused. Then I realized she thought I was a delivery person for a Chinese restaurant. I live in this building, I said with irritation. All I know is that you people are always leaving menus all over the place, she sneered. I got to my floor and got off. I was furious and vented to my friends and family, wishing I had called her out. The next time I ran into the woman, I was with my sister. Sure enough, she said the same thing to me, and my sister, knowing about the previous encounter, went ballistic calling the woman a racist right to her face and getting in more than a few choice four letter words. There were others on the elevator who just tried to ignore the whole scene. Eventually I had to pull my sister off the elevator when we got to our floor. This happened over 20 years ago. I hadn't thought about it for so long until my 11 year old daughter asked me recently, is Asian hate over? I had told her about the Atlanta shootings and the escalation of violence against Asians in this country. And about a week later, she asked me that heartbreaking question. I never would have called that little incident an example of Asian hate until this year, but now I know better. I told my daughter about the racist woman in the elevator. No, sweetie, it's not over, but you don't have to be scared. You need to speak up like your auntie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyung. I got chills when I read your story the first time and I so appreciate you sharing this story. And it's a question that um, we're all asking ourselves. So thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, wonderful to have you. Next up, I wanna introduce you guys to Cal's very own Julia Gay. She is Cal's community Cal marketing coordinator. Outside of the office, Julia is a dancer, playwright, and stand-up comedian. In October 2019, Julia produced her one-woman show, Mother Landed, exploring her narrative as a Chinese adoptee. You can find out more about her artistic work by visiting juliagay.com. The first draft of the poem that she is going to share was written as part of the Kaleidoscope Project, produced by Rebecca Nicholson and the Eastside Freedom Library last summer at the height of the uprising. Welcome, Julia. Thank you so much, Bua. The poem I'm about to share is entitled At the Edge of Enough. An ask went out into the community for API volunteers to marshal the defund MPD march. This is your time to show up as API for black lives, they said, and show up we did as marshals, and marchers and angry civilians. With our signs and our BLM masks, we march down University Avenue. They call out their names and we echo in response. Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Oscar Grant, a Tatiana Jefferson, Freddie Gray, 
Ahmad Arbery. Terence Crutcher. Betty Jones. Trayvon Martin. Laquan McDonald. Philando Castile. Dominique White. Brianna Taylor. George Floyd. My voice is hoarse. Parts of names get caught on the hangnails of my throat. Others muffled by my mask. Is it bad I don't even recognize all of their names? Don't know their ages, where they lived, the name of the mother who mourns them, the sound of their laughter, the way they took their morning coffee with cream, no sugar. Maybe they were too young to like the bitter taste of coffee. Maybe I skimmed their name in a headline as I scrolled mindlessly through my news feed, scrolled mindlessly through news feeding me, mindlessly feeding news through me, scroll through me, feeding me mindlessly news of another black person murdered by police. A sign flashes overhead. It reads, Asians for Black Lives Matter. And I wonder, would I remember all their names if they looked more like me? Would I march longer, chant louder, sob more violently? Would I feel something more sharp and biting than the numbness in my gut? If it were my cousin, my auntie, my son? Are we Asians doing enough for Black Lives Matter? Is waving a sign enough? If waving a sign is not enough, how much closer to enough does it get us? I notice my feet are sore. My socks have scrunched up, leaving my shoes free to scratch away at the rawness of my ankles. I think to myself, my feet are sore for Black Lives Matter. My ankles bleed for Black Lives Matter. But enough feels so infinitely far away. I suppose we would have to pause for a moment before we arrive at the edge of enough. Still our breath. Give gratitude to our breath. Stare at ourselves, reflected in the waters of this land, Minnesota Makoche, that hold to the expansiveness of the clouds above. Perhaps we must first love our own brownness. Love with no abandon the brownness of our skin, the brownness of our accents the brownness of the way we grow our food and move our bodies before we take to the streets, chanting black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Black is so, so beautiful. Before those words plant seeds in our hearts. Thank you. Black is beautiful. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, I get chills and um, you're just, you're amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Last but not least, our final storyteller tonight is Damu Vang. Damu is a rising immigrant justice advocate. He's been actively involved in anti-deportation work, including speaking out against harmful deportation policies at events with policymakers. And when he's not advocating, he likes to spend his time with his family, caring for three younger sisters and watching documentaries. He hopes to someday enter the medical field to continue caring for and helping others. Damu, take it away. 
Hey, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my title is called My Dad. So I'm Damu Vang. I'm 19 years old. I was born and raised in St. Paul, Minnesota. I graduated from City Academy. I'm the oldest of four children and older brother of three sisters. I'm a community member impacted by harmful deportation policies as well. So to tell you about me, I'm at a phase where I'm supposed to focus on the next chapter and where to proceed in my life. But about one year ago is when I overheard my parents speaking about deportation and I had learned my dad actually has a move over to Laos. So I misunderstood the conversation at first. So I went to my parents to clarify exactly what I heard. And to my surprise, everything they spoke about was all true. I'm still in shock today as I cannot even imagine one without my dad not being at home. He has always given me these little lectures about making good choices, learning from his mistakes and how important it is for me to succeed. That was the usual parent lectures that they always give at first, but with everything that's happening, I'm starting to realize the true meaning behind it all. My dad made a mistake in 1996 when he was 18 years of age, a year younger than I'm currently today, and he has never gone to any trouble ever since. He came to the U.S. in 1978 with his family, including my grandfather, who was a young Hmong soldier who fought in the secret war led by General Vang Pao, and he fought on behalf of the Americans. Minnesota has been my father's home for nearly 40 years now. He and my mother have been together for 26 years. He has raised me, my three sisters, and he even takes care of my grandparents. So last fall, my mother had a stroke and we have been struggling as she slowly begins to recover. And it's devastating to think that things get any worse with the thought of deportation always lingering over our heads. Because my dad, he is the foundation of our family. He is what holds us together and Without him, I really do know that we may fall apart. A couple months ago, I actually testified for the first time at a hearing to support House File 83 post-conviction relief. This bill would allow individuals with old convictions uh, who are facing deportation, like my father, to seek relief and be able to challenge their deportation order. While Minnesota seek laws allow some individuals to seek post-conviction relief, for too many, this opportunity and this path towards justice is cut off from them. I'm asking the state to please consider giving people like my dad another chance and to support my dad's petition for post-conviction relief, pass the bill, and support keeping families like mine together. And I would just like to say thank you for giving me such a great opportunity to talk and to share my journey and to, for most of all, listening to my story. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tiwi, and I've been from the very beginning the Minnesota Agent Voices, and it's been an honor and a privilege. And I'm here to say that we will be going to our breakout room, but before that, I would like everyone to collectively pause and shut their eyes and really think about the stories you've heard, the five great stories you've heard. Has it brought a feeling? Has it brought an image? Has it brought, brought a new thought perhaps? And to be able to just breathe in the wonderfulness of each of these stories and uh, before we go into our, our uh, rooms, collective rooms, um, what I'd also like to talk about is the community guides that we will be agreeing to, agreements. And that is to listen with an open heart and mind and to share and respect the space. And there's going to be zero tolerance for racism. And we each will be uh, put in the rooms and we will be able to have some of these questions. And it is perhaps in the small groups, we can introduce ourselves and share the word, image, or feeling you just meditated on. And what resonated with you most from the story? And what surprised you? So and these are some of the 
the discussion questions you will be working on and talking about. Okay. And so I think it's Kara that will um, put us in our community breakout rooms. I was trying to find a place for you to stay, a place where I'd feel safe. Anything we have known, anything we've forgotten, in the rain, in the dark we'll lay, in your arms, in your arms I'll stay. Anything we have known, anything we going to visit Minnesota in July. Oh, I am the one. <laughs> yes, this is my part of the script. Um, I'm going to wait like 30 seconds for all folks to come back. Hi, Kurt. I see your emoji, your thumbs up emoji. <laughs> I see your real hand emoji. I reciprocate. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're about ready to start. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tree. I help volunteer with Cal a lot. Um, I actually did the storytelling back in 2019 and have been helping since. So I'm here to close, close out a little bit, help you tell you what you can do to uplift these stories. Uh, Kay has generously shared all the uh, call to actions that you can take on here, which start with follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, at Cal, C-A-A-L, Minnesota on Facebook. Instagram is C-A-A-L-M-N, as well as Twitter. So check us out on those social channels and like our stuff and share our stories. Haha, -ha, we have a whole month of stories coming at you. Um, they're weekly. Use the hashtag mini Asian stories if you post them. We'd love for you to post them, share with people, share with all your friends, family, dogs, pets, neighbors, pets. And we'll have a roundup email every Friday for a list of the storytellers featured each week. You can also visit our website at cal, uh, calmn.org slash mini Asian stories. You see that around there? You can use, yep. uh, use the QR code to visit our website as well. I keep doing this. <laughs> I'm just feeling the thumbs up. And stay tuned. Stay tuned. We are doing a new thing this year. For uh, We're doing a hashtag mini Asian stories podcast in collaboration with the Radical Radio Hour, which is a local um, part of a local podcast programming set up in Frogtown. Um, and I think that's it. That's enough of my goofy Sagittarius sun energy and passing it to Margie to close out. Great. Thanks, Tree. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Margie Andreessen. I'm Chair Emeritus of Cal and behalf of the board. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, to me, Mini Asian Stories is about reclaiming what it means to be Minnesotan. As Asian Minnesotans, we are here and there's so many of us. It might not feel like that sometimes, but you're not alone. And earlier we were asked to think of a word or image after hearing our amazing featured storytellers. And my word is together. And that's what being a part of Cal means to me, knowing that I'm a part of something bigger with all of you to create a future that is just and joyful and where we take care of each other. And for many of us, this past year has been defined by rapid response as we've showed up to support each other in the face of COVID-19, individual and systemic acts of anti-Asian violence, 
the deportation of community members and other crises. Yet at Cal, we know that the work doesn't end when the headlines move on in the midst of our calls to rebuild and return to normal. We need leaders, we need us who are here to help build from crisis moments toward a long-term future uh, that we share together. And so through the month of May, Cal is looking to our community to help reach our goal of 150 donors, super easy. Uh, we need 150 donors to sustain our ongoing work and any contribution that you can make today and this month, whether it's $1 or $1,000 will help make a difference. So we invite you to make a gift today. Nick is gonna be dropping the donation link into our chat and your support of Cal means so much to us. So thank you again for coming to tonight's event. Hope you have a good night and let's keep building together. Thank you. Hello, I put something in the chat and I was wondering about the podcast, when it's going to be on, what day of the week, what time, what channel on the radio. If someone could respond, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, um, thanks so much for your question. Uh, someone dropped in the chat, but if you can sign up for our newsletter, we'll be sending an announcement about the podcast there. And it will be aired, it will be available on the website as well as aired on WFNU, which is the Frogtown uh, community radio station. So yeah, stay tuned for that and more. Thank you so much. Thank you.